exclusive. I was on Oprah for my 82 pound Manjaro weight loss and Zep Bound weight loss. I guess I'm Elizabeth, the Countess of Shopping. And if you saw last night on Oprah, I was there. I was there, I was there. Um, my after show, many of you straight out of the gate were asking about me speaking. I spoke with Oprah. Um, and we're gonna talk, okay, we're gonna dive all into it. And but that was on the after show, which is now on Hulu. So if you missed the ABC special yesterday on March 18th, 2024, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC, the replay is now on Hulu. If you have YouTube TV, you very well may be able to go back and see the episode. But um, Mr. Freddie, by the way, I'm Elizabeth Countess of Shopping. My co-host, Mr. Freddie, is not here today. He wanted to chase squirrels, so we've got a backup co-host today. <laughs> As we go through talking about this powerhouse Oprah episode on Manjaro, we go v weight loss, vet bound weight loss, and Manjaro for type two diabetics and Ozempic for type two diabetics. I'm really excited to dive in. I got my notepad today. I know some of y'all hate it, but I love it. And we're going back to some pen and paper talking about literally the show, um, Amy who was on the show, the doctors on the show, Big Pharma was on the show. We had Eli Lilly and Nova Nordisk. I found that fascinating, a couple of key things. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and dive into the show. I want to encourage you, go watch the after show because that is where it talks about the um, Manjaro shortages going on, the Gobi shortages going on. I had grilled them in the after show and we're gonna get to that in a minute, but let's go through and talk a little bit about the beginning of this. I completely related to Amy. She was uh, the one who shared her story sitting right here to the left of Amy. Amy's on the right. To the left of Amy is the CEO of Weight Watchers and I'm sitting in the back in pink and then to my right side, the right upper corner is my um, client, uh, my doctor, and um, her, she does my face stuff. And then I'm a patient of hers. And then also a friend, a Dr. Lynn Neiman. She's a board certified anesthesiologist. She's brilliant and really, really on the pulse with <clears throat> GLP-1 medications too, in addition to medical aesthetics. So talking about this conversation, which I'm gonna cry during this. Like I cried when I was on Oprah. Um, I'm gonna play for you guys the after show um, because I know some of you guys didn't hear it. I'm not gonna play it on the screen because I don't wanna get a copyright violation, but I want you to hear my conversation with Oprah and then we're gonna dive into it about how helpful this conversation is if you have chronic obesity management, if you have type two diabetes, or if you have a partner or a family member who has these, this is an incredibly important conversation to have about the science um, and what I learned from it, which hopefully will help you, will help you with GLP-1 medication. So this is Oprah talking to me. Hold on, let me turn up the volume. The lady behind you was in tears. And why were you in tears? Oh, take the mic. Why were you in tears when she was speaking? You articulated I, the, the depths and bowels of my soul of being on a diet since I was 10 years old and young, and I cried as well. The level in which my mother tried the very best for me, but the shame that I carry with me and now that I'm shedding, literally as I'm shedding from the medication through my body, through you, Oprah, you're such a gift. Because I knew when I heard that you were on this medication, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Literally, like, it was validation. This whole show has been so validating. You articulated what every obese person in America feels when they're taking these medications and having a lifestyle change that can be the best mommy to my eight-year-old son and the best wife to my hot husband and have a great career as a YouTuber now, encouraging others as a result of this lifestyle change. But I very much get the shame, the guilt, the condemnation. God. And I get to be free, happy, joyous, and free. Everybody. Speaking the lady. Oh, ah. Uh. I'm so grateful that that was on, that's on the after show on Hulu. Um, and I was so grateful that that moment was captured one of the most freeing conversations of my life because truly chronic obesity management, and we're talking about type two diabetes today too. So my type two diabetes friends, I do not talk about my type two diabetes. I talk about chronic obesity management. So I'm lumping everybody in together, but know that obviously you're here as part of this conversation, even though we're gonna progress with chronic obesity management on this topic of the painful juggernaut of having something so torturous, torturous, being made into something positive, beautiful, healthy, amazing, and quite frankly, I'm gonna live longer as a result of this medication. It is not the easy way out. It talked about science. Now that doctor in the episode, um, I don't think I pulled up, no, I didn't pull up his picture to show you guys. When you saw the doctor on that show, there's two doctors. 
Dr. Velasquez, and then there's the gentleman doctor. I'm going to have him on the show. I, ironically, after the show, him and I were taking the red eye flight out after the airing. We left LAX. We were next to each other in TSA. And as we were doing our TSA check through, um, I said, I want to interview on my show. So know that that is coming and hopefully will come to fruition. I'm putting it out there that I do because he has been studying diet, um, type 2 diabetes, but obesity, chronic obesity management for a long time. He is on the pulse and he is getting paid. They did say in the show, him and Dr. Velasquez are getting paid from Big Pharma to do their research as well. So, I mean, hello, they're in obesity. So of course they're like, that's their job. So it would make natural sense that that's how they get a paycheck <laughs> is because they're studying these GLP-1 medications. So having him, he's coming, which is why you're going to want to click like and subscribe because uh, I will have that interview and where we'll do a Q&A in my private Manjaro weight loss Facebook group, Zepbound weight loss, Wegovi weight loss. All are welcome at that table, Tara Zepatide weight loss and some glutide weight loss. We we're having uh, the show, going ahead and having dialogue on that, and people have more questions about GLP ones. So I absolutely will make sure that we have. I'll put a thread in that group. That group, by the way, is in the description link below. Um, we'll have a thread about that, talking about it. How Oprah was talking to the doctor about how alcoholism is a disease, obesity is a disease. And can I be perfectly candid, blunt, and honest? Oh, the Duke's coming up and I'm filming. You gotta go back downstairs, baby. You gotta go back downstairs right now, please. Right now, please. Go back downstairs. Thank you so much, son. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Having a big conversation here. Um, as we're talking about how alcoholism is a disease, how obesity is a disease. And if I can be brutally blunt and vulnerable, I walked into the conversation, obviously being obese, Still, even though I've lost 82 pounds, I'm still in the obese category. I can't wait to get to the overweight category. Um, but having the conversation of, it's not really a disease. And me being really vulnerable on that, of I'm obese, I have the disease. And I was thinking that that was an easy way out or there's still a lot of background, background, which I have obviously been through extensive therapy. One, I feel like you should very much so in this weight loss journey to make it a permanent lifestyle change, but there's a lot of baggage and unhealthy beliefs that I've had to let go and process with a trained professional that I couldn't do by myself. And trauma, right? Obviously being 82, more than over 100 pounds overweight, there's an unhealthy relationship with food and some trauma associated with that as well. But I digress. So coming into the show, I didn't really think of obesity as a disease, but as they were, I mean, I did, but I didn't. There were still some holding ons of not believing that. And then now believing obesity is a disease. It's like how alcoholism is a disease. And people back in the day didn't believe alcoholism was a disease. They're like, just put the bottle down, but it's a disease. And how with obesity, just put the food down, well, it is a disease. And that there is a brain component, there's a hormone component, there's a gut component, there's a whole body component with it, within our cells, there's a set point weight. And I loved how the doctor expressed, you can hold your breath, you can hold your breath, but eventually you're gonna have to come back up and get air. And how, fascinating that was for me. I thought that was a great example too. And let me know in the comments if you found that really, really helpful too. But having a doctor to speak with, um, for me, it's with Join Fridays. I am absolutely obsessed with them. They have been instrumental in my GLP-1 medication and weight loss journey. Um, I went to them because they focus on GLP-1 patients for type 2 diabetes and with obesity care management. They care. They have, because this is a, their primary business, they really are rooted in making sure folks have options, um, either with Manjaro or Wegovi um, for chronic obesity management, or uh, excuse me, uh, Zepbound, Zepbound or Wegovi, and then Manjaro and Ozempic for type two diabetics. And then they also are one of the only telehealth companies that do also prescribe compounds. So with the shortage, with the Manjaro shortage and the Wegovi shortage, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, they offer compounds to join Friday's does. I will link down in the description link below a code. It's queen capital letters, Q U E E N, uh, for an extra 25% off your monthly membership included in that membership is your conversation with a medical provider. If you're eligible for prescriptions, um, prescriptions are obviously like different, but you could get compound shipped directly to you. Be mindful. There's two States that are no longer, it's like against state law to do compounds, Louisiana and Mississippi. Um, so be up to date on your state laws with that too, by the way. But with Join Fridays, they prescribe name brands or compounds. What a great choice right now, particularly with the Manjaro shortage and Wegovi shortage. And so I highly recommend them. They're so knowledgeable, but they care. 
Most importantly, they care. Um, their customer service is on point. We talk about that a lot. My free Majora weight loss and Zetbound and Wigovi, uh, Terazepatide and Semiglutide all are welcome at that table group um, of how wonderful their customer service is. If you're just starting your journey or if you're wanting to transfer over, because I transferred from my primary care doctor who was dealing with colds and flus, God bless. Um, my primary care doctor before that shamed me about my obesity and was like, well, just stop eating. Just exercise more. Calories in, calories out. Eat less, move more. Like that 1990s not recognizing obesity as a disease and treating it absolutely in the wrong way. Um, so I switched from that primary care doctor to another one, and she was wonderful. She actually started me on my GLP-1 medication journey. And then from there, I knew she was handling cold flus and strep throat. She couldn't handle chronic obesity management care and the blood work I was going to be needing with managing type 2 diabetes. So switched over to Join Fridays, and gosh, what a blessing. They've been wonderful, wonderful. So I'll link that information down below. With the Manjaro shortage and the Wegovi shortage, Novo Nordisk was there for Wegovi and Ozempic. And Eli Lilly, the manufacturer of Manjaro and Zepbound, were both there. I grilled them, and in the after show, you can see them talking. They got cut from the main show. You can see in the after show um, them talking about the shortage. I was the one grilling them, but I was not mic'd. I got so excited, I stood up and I just started talking, and I should have waited to get the microphone, and, which I do later on, which we're gonna talk about. And that clip that you guys saw earlier was around like the 19 minute, 20 minute mark in the after show. It was near the very end. FYI, if you do have Hulu to watch the end. I signed up for, I was like for seven bucks to get to watch it or eight bucks or whatever. I was like, I'm gonna watch it and I'm so glad I did. But so that's where Big Pharma, I'm grilling them. You guys had asked me, you're like talking about the shortage because y'all get on me. Because I talk about chronic obesity management. I obviously talk about type 2 diabetes too. But people really get a bug in their butt about chronic obesity management. And so um, I wanted to grill them. What about this shortage? When is it ending? When are we having relief from fighting for our medications? And yeah, because you aren't having the medication, we're going to go to the compound route, route which um, as long as it, the, the medication, the brand name is on the FDA shortage list, you can have compounds. And so... Um, talking about that. And then the little PR thing is, well, we did our independent testing and there was a lot of, <clears throat> there were poo-pooing compounds, all of them. Absolutely not, do not take compounds. And I said, actually, there's a lot of reputable compound pharmacies out there um, that was an interesting conversation. So all of that, the Big Pharma got majorly cut. <laughs> That was one of my takeaways. I was like, they cut their time a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. They were not even really in the big show. They were at the very after show, and even that got cut, which I thought was interesting. Um, I also found really interesting about the child that was on the show. She was in her teenage years. And I walked into the show being like, children should absolutely not be on GLP-1 medications. Like, they should wait until, I mean, our prefrontal cortex, the front part of our brain that makes decisions, does not even develop until we're 25 years old, that prefrontal cortex. So, and with being in child rearing years and with periods and because there's hormone, and it's the GLP-1 hormone with that, um, I really felt like kids should not be on GLP-1 medications, but I actually walked out after hearing the family and hearing more about Maggie. She was the 16-year-old on the Oprah special about blame, shame, and the weight loss revolution special, the ABC special. I felt differently. I'm like, well, it's because it's a genetic disease. Why would you deny a cancer patient having treatment for that? It's akin very much to that to me with this or someone with high blood pressure that has a genetic predisposition to high blood pressure, because high blood pressure does run in families, why would one not want them to have treatment care for that? I think there's so much we don't know and that we're still uncovering. Um, obviously, for adults, Manjaro, um, Zepbound, we go the Ozempic, tell us not to be on the medication while we're breastfeeding, while we're pregnant. I mean, they say not, obviously, which makes sense, right? <laughs> Um, you don't want to be taking things when you're pregnant or breastfeeding as well. And so I, I found I walked away having a lot of compassion for that family, a lot of courage for them speaking out. And I think also um, more understanding of, yeah, like the doctor had said in the show that people have different varying degrees of obesity. There's a spectrum. And Oprah talked about that. There's a wide spectrum. Some people can have a lose weight with eating less and moving more. But some people have a genetic predisposition, excuse me, 
that they cannot. And so, but there's varying spectrums of that. And so when I share, and this was really helpful for me to hear in one of my takeaways, is when I share from my point of view, I'm not at the highest spectrum probably of obesity, but I'm not at the lowest spectrum. I'm probably somewhere in the middle. And that with GLP-1 medications for people taking them, the doctor said in the show that there are hyper losers like Amy, she's lost over 160 pounds in a year or something like that, around that ballpark. That's a hyper loser to me. I mean, that's a lot. Um, there's normal people, which I probably would classify myself in that. And then there's hypo weight loss losers, meaning people who take GLP-1 medications who are slower. So if you're slower on this, don't worry, don't fret my pet. It's actually really normal. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And did you catch that 17% of people stopped taking GLP-1 medications because of side effects? typically gastrointestinal, and the most severe ones, pancreatitis, appendicitis, even that thyroid cancer, the genetic one. Um, I believe it's genetic, yeah, the thyroid cancer that the doctor Velasquez was talking about is um, rare, less than 1%. Less than 1%, but yet the media, and to be honest, even myself, have heavily focused in on these severe side effects when it's actually less than 1%. Percent. And if that was you, if you were that 1%, of course you're... You're gonna to wanna to talk about that, right? That's not invalidating other people's experience for having more severe side effects. <clears throat> but most people do have like normal side effects. And, but it was less than 1% had the severe ones, which I thought was interesting. I found it interesting 17% of people get off the medication, which we've talked about here at Countess of Shopping. Um, could that be that people did not make lifestyle changes or that the side effects were so severe or that, like there's a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things that come into play with that. The finances, oh, people were talking about the insurance component of this too. And I thought that was interesting. Big Pharma talked when they were speaking about insurance companies and the doctor hit on this too, the gentleman doctor, I'm forgetting his name and please forgive me, um, was talking about, I'm gonna have him on my show so I need to know his name, please forgive me. Um, but the gentleman doctor was talking about policymakers, if they don't even believe this is a disease, why would they possibly make policy and put this insurance company stuff if they don't even think that obesity is a disease? which if we go back to when I walked in, I still was having doubts about obesity as a disease until I heard the concrete scientific facts. And we talk facts here at Countess of Shopping. I love me Jesus and I talked about Jesus in Oprah, but I will talk science all day long and actual medical facts with that. So I appreciated very much um, them talking to about this is not a choice, that obesity people would not choose this, would never choose this, would never choose this torturous at times lifestyle. Um, I would not. I would not. I would choose a lot of other things over. And I thought about that before over the decades of having this disease. Um, on my vision board, taking a right turn, I had on my vision board three decades ago to be with Oprah. and to have this conversation that I had with her. So I wanna share with you, if you don't believe in vision boards, with God's grace, love, kindness, and compassion, it really was on my vision board. And I was telling Harpo Productions, I pulled it out of the dust underneath, like I had to go in my dusty basement to go get it. But um, to have this conversation has been in my mind for three decades and to have it come to fruition, really healing really healing. I feel like I can move forward to be happy, joyous, and free. And I feel like I have been, honestly, the last 15 months of being on Manjaro and Zepbound have been the most freeing of my life. What a gift. Um, what a gift. I do want to take a right turn. I loved in our group the support that we got. There was so much support, so much love. And I think talking about shame, blame, and the weight loss resolution, of that there was a shame combination factor that a lot of us has felt with chronic obesity management that is now there's more education going on. There's somebody in my life who texted me after the show and their reaction instead of being like, oh my gosh, congratulations, I know that this was a pinnacle life healing moment for you or, or anything of, oh my gosh, you got to talk to Oprah or any of that, said, well, in my day, we didn't have fat people, so why are there fat people? In my day, we didn't have fat people back decades ago, so why are there, like, I'm like, what do I, what? What? <laughs> what? That was the takeaway of this moment of that when I was, when she was saying, when I was growing up, that there weren't fat people. 
basically invalidating that, it, <laughs> that be, I don't know what she was saying. It felt very invalidating to me. And so I am, I had a cry about that. I cried last night after the show, I was like, upset and I realized I'm not going to let that poo-poo on my parade, that there's still a lot of education to go with this. And I think because it is so confusing that there is a spectrum of obesity that some people are overweight because they do make lifestyle choices of not exercising and eating the best things. But some people have a genetic predisposition to this, that they hold their breath as long as they can and eventually they have to come up for air and then the weight's going to come back which is, hello, Oprah, the yo-yo of it, the holding the breath and then coming up for air and then gaining the weight back. Hello, that's been me. I mean, I competed in the preliminary for Miss America pageant and a bunch of different things and then then was over 100 pounds overweight. Finally, I was like, I give up. I just can't do this. I can't. <laughs> I'd rather just give up and enjoy my life of eating food than having this juggernaut. And now with having the GLP-1 medication, to be able to have great blood panels, to be able to move with my eight-year-old and my hot husband, and huh, it's a different life. And I think that that poses questions in itself, which I pray if Harpo, you're watching this, please have me back on for a part two. I absolutely would love to go and have another conversation on this because it was so impactful and so meaningful. And I learned a dramatic amount from the science component of this that I have much more of compassion understanding but the actual facts and rooting in this and get ready baby one of my questions to Eli Lilly and to Novo Nordisk is what is coming up next and so we talked about the pill format about how that's coming up next and um, she knew uh, the Novo Nordisk when we were filming obviously could not say anything and I couldn't say anything I've been under an NDA I'm finally like yay now that it's all public information I can disclose um, was talking about, she knew then about uh, how Wegovy got an FDA approved for heart disease, which I do think is going to change a lot for healthcare insurance companies. It's going to take some time, <laughs> but it's going to change a lot. Um, and I think it's going to change a lot in terms of the expense. As we get more options, it's as I mean, I'm a businesswoman. Love me some capitalism because in the marketplace, when you have more competitors as opposed to a monopoly, uh, do you guys ever play the board game Monopoly? It changes the cost of things. And so that should change the cost of things as we get more of these drugs coming in too. Um, I found it interesting too in my thing that I shared about how I was on a diet since I was 10 years old. And I really pondered a lot about this. And I said in my part, and I want to make sure that it's clear that I publicly say this because I publicly said it on the Oprah show. I was put on a diet at 10 years old, and I felt like I conveyed that my mom did the best that she could, much like the woman Maggie, and I was referring and it got cut out about the segment with Maggie, the 16-year-old, how she was put on diets since she was very young, because clearly she has a genetic predisposition. And that was not a slight to my mother. My mother did the best she could with the information that she had in the 80s and 90s. And if my son is eight years old, he is, does not have the obesity gene. If he had the obesity gene, how would I do? And I have a lot of grace, kindness, and compassion for my mom. And so that wasn't a slight against her. What I was trying to say and what I hope was communicated was that she did the best that she could putting me on a diet at 10 years old. Your kid's obese and trying to get them off. I got kicked off of the statewide the state champion soccer team it was a really elite soccer team because I was fat and the soccer coach told my mom I needed to go on a diet and if I didn't I'd get kicked off the team and I got kicked off the team and so there's been a lot of shame on my part and that's what I was saying in the video was it was my shame and my guilt I'm not associating that with anyone else because I do believe everyone makes the best decisions that they can with the information that they have at that given point and that for me was the point that I was trying to make about my mom was that she did the very best she could. And I do have a lot of grace, kindness, and compassion for that because if the shoe was on the other foot with me, with my son, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Particularly in the 80s and 90s. Information is so much different now. And there's so many more choices besides just having, here, have some grilled chicken. Like that's what you guys asked, like why I couldn't eat chicken. It's because I was on a chicken diet when I was like 10 years, which I was one of the reasons why I used to hate chicken. I don't hate chicken anymore. It takes some pause for me to eat it and it has to be prepared in a very particular way for me to eat chicken, but I ate more chicken now. Um, but I used to not because of that trauma, because when you take away someone's 
drug at seeing when, like at 10 years old and things like that. Like I used to sneak food and Halloween candy and things like that. So that I wanted to make really, really clear. My mom did the best she could with the information that she had. And uh, people in my life today who are making comments like, oh, uh, well, we didn't have fat people when I was growing up. I'm gonna bless and release them because they just don't have enough education. They're doing the best they can with the information they have at this time. And so I'm really trying to lean into that. But I'm not saying that didn't hurt my feelings because <sighs> it did, <laughs> it did, it made me cry um, or I allowed it to make me cry, I should say. Um, but I'm blessing and releasing that today because it was such a positive, amazing, healing conversation. And again, if you haven't watched that, go to YouTube um, TV. If you have YouTube TV and you can watch the replay, probably on ABC is where it was. If you don't have ABC, it is on Hulu. I bought the trial Hulu for like a month for like eight bucks. For me, well worth it to watch that after show. Fascinating after show. And the first part of where the very beginning is was my question, where I'm not on camera the first minute, but that was my question. That was me asking those questions. And I was grilling. I was grilling them. They cut some of that out though, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I do also want to point out, um, Pharma said that they were working around the clock 24 seven, having people in factories spending the night um, to get medications and get caught up on the shortages too. And so I could see in their eye, like they really are trying, right? That doesn't take away things that's making it very hard to get these medications. But I do think using resources like Join Fridays that we know they have reputable compound pharmacies that they work with, they're third party tested, and that Join Fridays can prescribe Manjaro or Zetbound or Wegovy, depending on eligibility, of course. They're gonna make you do a blood panel too, which I very much appreciate because uh, they're reputable healthcare providers. Um, they're amazing. And many of you guys use them now, you've switched over too, which has been awesome. So if you're wanting to have if you do not have a conversation with a healthcare provider that is a healthy one, you need to switch. I would love it if you choose to join Fridays, but also um, I really want to encourage you switch because you do on GLP-1 medications, having that chronic dialogue back and forth about side effects, titrating up, staying at the same dosage. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this of having a conversation. Um, and Join Fridays has two options. You can do a video chat where you actually get to see your healthcare provider, or you can do it, I'm forgetting the word. It's a word where you can message them back and forth where you don't have to be on camera. You can do it that way too. That's a new feature and they're building out an entire portal for GLP. P1 medication pay, uh, patients and have month, um, every Monday a GLP-1 dietitian call, which is amazing. Um, so again, use the code QUEEN. It's in the description link below uh, if you want to switch over to be with them too. But I think having knowledgeable healthcare providers like Dr. Velasquez and the gentleman doctor on that show who works at the Cleveland, um, at the Cleveland um, Obesity Clinic. And I'll link it down below too, by the way. And I'll link down below also the Hulu link too in the description link below it, uh, for you as well. Um, so you can follow up on, if you wanna get the Hulu, I'm not associated with Hulu at all, but get that. Um, actually, I might have a, be able to get a discount code too. If I can get a discount code, I'll put that down on the description link below as well. I'll work on that for Hulu. If you don't see it in the description, it means I didn't get it. I'll, I'll write a note. I didn't get the Hulu, I didn't get the Hulu. Let me make a note. Um, I will write, I didn't get the Hulu discount or I did, I'll put that in there, but it's only eight bucks. Um, I would love to know your thoughts. So we are going to continue this conversation and uh, tomorrow's video or later this week, I'm not sure when, I'm tired y'all, so I may take a pause from YouTube for tomorrow, but maybe not. Um, I wanna show you guys the lead up to Oprah. How I got asked, many of you are like, how did you get picked? YouTube, YouTube, uh, Harpo Productions saw my videos and, um, Picked me. It was cool. And so I got to have that the day that I, I and I couldn't tell y'all. I wanted to be like, oh my gosh, guess who contacted me today? I got to talk to Harpo. And it that was incredible. So and I got to meet production at Harpo and um the most professional team. You guys know I'm an executive producer for filming projects. And so a, a, a executive producer and producer to work with other production like Harpo. Hello, like they're the pinnacle of success. To see, it was so cool. Even just the lighting on the set was so cool. Just like looking up at the lights, I'm like, ah, I'm such a nerd about lighting for my clients. And so um, less about myself, more for my clients. I really care about lighting for them. And to see that on Oprah, how they set it up. Um, when we arrived, we got to ride on a golf cart. It was at the CBS lot, even though it was aired on ABC, which I thought was interesting. And we were next to where Squid Games is filmed which I thought was interesting. I got on a golf cart and we got to drive to the VIP section and walk through the back end VIP area and go to the green room and 
that whole, I mean, what a lifetime experience. What a lifetime experience. So the woman that I was with, um, let me see if I pulled it up. Hold on. The woman that I was with, I want to say, oh man, I meant to put this, I meant to have this on the on the screen here to pop up to show you guys. The one I was with was Dr. Lynn Neiman. Um, she and I, let me see if I can pull it up on set. This was the cool part. Let me see. Here was me on the show. That was one of my before and after clips was there. There's us in the audience. I'm in the pink suit on the back left. Um, the gentleman I was sitting next to was a music producer. I thought that was interesting. I'm like, how are you here? I was in the credits. Countess of Shopping was in the credits down below. And then there was us on set. That was really cool. They're like, get off the show. It was the show was over and like security was pushing us out. And I'm like, and my phone wouldn't work. And I'm like, <laughs> while we were there, I got to stay at the Beverly Wilshire, which was in Pretty Woman. And uh, at lunch, we sat next to Usher. I know. This was right after Usher's, was he in the lawsuit with P. Diddy? Anyways, we were sitting right next to him. So he had this big old burly at the Beverly Wilshire for lunch. I was watching him. I'm like, what did you eat in Usher? It was awesome to see him too. So that was that in itself. And I got to, people were like, what happened with your Chanel at uh, Chanel and Rodeo Drive? It was like a moment in Pretty Woman. <laughs> I got to go to Chanel and Gucci and my favorite places uh, on Rodeo Drive while we were there filming. So, and then I took the red eye back because I wanted to take my kid to school, which is exactly what I did. And being back with my hot husband and my son, I wanted to get off of Rodeo Drive. That felt very ick to me. Um, I'm like, this is not my world. I want to go back to rural Virginia. I want to go back to my family. This is all like, it was very weird. Very, very weird. I'm like, get me back to Virginia. I love my life in Virginia. So my sweet friends, we're going to continue the conversation here at Countess of Shopping YouTube. So make sure you click that like and subscribe button. If you are just starting your GLP-1 journey, get my free Manjaro weight loss success checklist down in the description link below and join my free Manjaro weight loss encouragement group. Uh, it's a powerhouse for a community of thousands of people. It's a positive only zone. If you are not positive, don't join that group. <laughs> we will pass you off to one of the other groups that is negative on Facebook, but we are not at my group. And I'll link that down on the description link below. Make sure you check out Join Fridays as well as they're a phenomenal resource uh, for GLP-1 um, healthcare providers. They're awesome for both compounds and name brands. And to Harpo Productions, bless you. And to Oprah, thank you for literally having one of the most healing conversations out of my entire life. I really do feel happy, joyous, and free and letting go of that guilt, shame, condemnation on national television. That'll do it. <laughs> I love y'all. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.